The following was written by Robert Wright and published in Dodge City, the Cowboy Capital in 1913. The abandonment of Fort Dodge, the settlement of the military reservation, and the establishment of the soldier's home were important steps in the seeming course of advancement in this period of Dodge City's history. The abandonment of Fort Dodge as a military post in June 1882 created surprise among the Dodge City people and settlers generally. With the abandonment of the fort, the people would have no protection against Indian raids. But the troops stationed at Fort Dodge were sent, one company to Fort Reno, one company to Fort Supply, and the third company to Fort Elliott, Texas where they could be in proximity to the Indian reservations. Fort Dodge, after its abandonment by the military, was partially demolished, many buildings being removed. However, the rebuilding and repairing took place, and the establishment of the soldier's home sustained the character of the famous post. The establishment of this home was indicated as early as the first part of 1883, a resolution having been introduced in the Kansas legislature, memorializing Congress to cede the Fort Dodge military reservation for that purpose. But it was not until 1887 that the home was established. Late in May 1886, a sudden rush for settlement on the Fort Dodge Reservation was made early one Monday morning, and a hundred or more claims staked off between Sunday night at 12 o'clock and Monday morning before sunrise. No one appeared to know how the reservation happened to be thrown upon the market all of a sudden, and no one stopped to inquire, but went right along with settling and improving some portion of the reservation, regardless of what the outcome might be. The people were perfectly wild with the excitement occasioned by this mysterious move. Every available team in the city was employed to haul lumber. Carpenters were in demand, who, after being hired to do a little midnight job in the way of erecting a claim house, refused to work for their employers, but, on the other hand, hired teams and went to the reservation with lumber, squatted upon a hundred and sixty acres acres of land and erected a house for themselves. Now, all of this was wholly unwarranted on the squatter's part. The reservation had not been thrown open to settlement, and the only foothold the premature settlers gained was that of squatter's rights, which gave him the first right to purchase, in case the land was put up for sale. The reservation lands were subsequently opened to settlement, on terms prescribed by the government, by purchase and priority in settlement. The original squatters, except in a few instances, relinquished their rights, and others proved up the claims. Robert Wright Today, Fort Dodge is known as the Kansas Soldier's Home, and its mission is to provide quality health care facilities for veterans and their dependents based on the values of choice, respect, and self-determination. 179 people were living in Fort Dodge, according to the 2020 census. A number of historic buildings still stand at Fort Dodge. These include the Custer House, a building that once served as the post headquarters and where George Custer lived for a short time. Nimitz Hall, which was originally three separate barracks built in 1867 and 1868 and the Pershing Barracks, which were originally the post-hospital and was built in 1868. 